How long does it really take to rob a bank? Only to see the man open his handbag and hack into the police radio. Then he detonated a parking lot three minutes from the bank. While the police car rushed to the scene of the explosion, the robber responsible for the robbery also quickly approached the bank. When the police car arrived, at the scene of the explosion. The man then ordered, move. They first fired several shots to quickly control the hostages. Then, one of them entered the surveillance room to destroy the surveillance. The other one broke into the manager's office at the same time, threatened the manager to open the vault. At the moment of opening the bank vault, the police did not know that the bank had been invaded. The purpose of the robbers was not the cash inside, but the bank safe was already marked. 12, 14, 84. 40. 72. Ready. From the moment the safe was opened, the robbers really entered the alarm countdown. Three minutes. The bank safe is connected to an alarm. In the event of a violent intrusion, the police department will be the first to receive the message and will have the nearest police force quickly to the scene and the closest police force is at the scene of the explosion. So, the robbers only had three minutes to move and evacuate. Two minutes later, hundreds of millions of bonds were bagged and the police who came from the explosion site had one minute to arrive at the scene. So the remaining minute is the time for the robbers to evacuate. However, in this crucial minute, a robber suddenly got greedy. He wanted to take the piles of cash. He could have evacuated a minute earlier, but because of one man's greed, they were targeted by several police cars. Of course, James, who was in charge of the whole robbery, had an emergency exit plan. He immediately asked Bill to drive a van to block the police cars that were chasing him. Bill drifted his car and blocked the road with his body. With a violent collision, Bill blocked his face and rushed away from the scene. At night, the robbers arrived at the safe zone, looking at the bag full of cash. The man who almost delayed the big event did not feel that he was wrong. He was even unhappy with James, who was in charge of the command. Shortly after, James arrived. He did not give this man any opportunity to defend himself. He beat him directly and severely. Then, James wrapped layers of tape around the man's mouth and nose so that he couldn't breathe. After that, he dropped a stopwatch and timed it to one minute. James warned everyone that if they didn't follow the plan, they would fail. Someone will die or someone will escape. 10 years. I lost 10 years because of one greedy thought. James gives the bonds to an old cobbler. The old cobbler is his adoptive father and the head of the entire crime syndicate. The foster father told James the robbery was commissioned by the bank president in order to make another profit before he went bankrupt. That's why he hired someone to steal the hundreds of billions of one worth of bank bonds. But James wasn't interested in that at all. Here, James takes on another mission. This time it's to steal evidence of his client's crimes from the prosecutor's office. James made a detailed plan based on the information, although the prosecutor's office is heavily guarded, but he was able to do it again. Time, distance, location, his calculations were spot on, but just as six of his men were safely evacuated, he suddenly looked through his binoculars and saw a man in a building across the street was pointing a camera at him. James immediately went to the man's room. James would not allow a single mistake in his plan. Even if there was, he would deal with it cleanly and without mercy. The last task was completed. James was ready to turn and leave, but his adoptive father asked again to help him with one more task. James knew it was a never-ending request, so he decisively refused. But little did he know that danger was approaching him. James had just gotten into the car when a rope was suddenly wrapped around his neck. He knew this was the consequence of refusing his adoptive father. After struggling, James hurriedly stepped on the gas and ran straight into the wall. The killer was rushed down. He hurriedly pulled up the seat belt and strangled the killer's neck. Then with one push, the killer was dead. James was furious and found his adoptive father. This was the last mission. This time the mission was to plant a Trojan horse in the stock exchange. While James was thinking about his plan of action, the major crime squad was onto them. Based on the last bank robbery, they found that Bill, one of James's game, had been at the crime scene several times by comparing his appearance. He was identified as the robber who drove the truck in the bank robbery. Ka, the team leader, quickly asked his men to find all the images of Bill at different points in time. 
Finally, he locked Bill's face in a convenience store and threw his checkout information at the convenience store at that time. He found out the area where Bill might be moving. With Carl's command, the tracking operation began. The team turned into cab drivers, motorcyclists, ordinary passersby and skateboard boys. They were hiding in Bill's area of activity. The process of waiting for the target to appear is long and tedious. In this process, they did not dare to take it lightly because every passerby they pass, every figure that passes by in the corner could be the target they are waiting for. After waiting for a day, the new team member who knew finally got a break. She couldn't wait to run into the bathroom. Is she crazy? Yunju, do you hear me? Yes, please say. There's really nothing to say. Just remember to wash your hands. Yunju, Come to your senses. This is the best welcome. It turns out that Yunju forgot to turn off the walkie-talkie in his haste. The surveillance team searched for Bu's trail every day, but a dousing people searched for 16 days in a row without a single clue. Just when everyone was worried, Yunju realized that there was a problem with the scope of their search. She was a newcomer to the surveillance team, but she has a keen intuition and a good memory. She is known as a human eye camera. Every place, time and detail that her eyes stand, she was able to recapitulate them all clearly. Yunju began to analyze and found that the focus of their surveillance might be wrong. She questioned Carl. The surveillance should focus on the middle of the suspect's three points of presence. Carl Carl agreed. He changed the surveillance area and gave Yunju the opportunity to go out for surveillance. Wu's analysis was right. She soon spotted Bill's trail on the street. The team worked quickly. They used their professional tracking skills. They successfully found Bill's address, room 715. Next, a Kali Kuti named Squirrel appeared. He set up a tight surveillance on Bill's floor. They watch Bill's every move 24 hours a day in order to find the other six robbers and kill them all. Two days into nights of continuous surveillance, Bill never left the house. A woman who came to the door on her own initiative came many times. When she left, she even took Bill's garbage with her. Yunju pieced together a Udoku paper from the garbage. And the answer to this Udoku is the IP address of a stock exchange building. This shows that the robber's next target is probably the stock exchange. Soon after, Bill finally went out. But he didn't know. At this time, he was already under the close surveillance of the police. After matching, the six men who showed up at the nest matched the robbers of the bank robbery and successfully hijacked James' call signal. It was near the exchange. James was already on the rooftop. He was looking down at the movements downstairs while eavesdropping on the police radio. And then he suddenly heard the police seemed to have set up a trap here. They were waiting for him to step into the trap. He calls his men off, but it's too late. Weapons confirmed. Unit 1, fire, guns, surrounding the viaduct. At that moment, Carl and Yunju followed James' cell phone signal to a recreational plaza. But the area under the bridge was full of pedestrians. It was impossible to tell who the robbers were. Carl immediately asked his female colleague to call James and asked Yunju to keep an eye on the person who was answering the phone. However, there were many callers at the same time. There was no way to tell for sure. And the vigilant James soon realized that this was a police test. When the police found out that James had turned off his phone and asked Hyun Ju to find the person who hung up the phone, James pretended to be on the phone and got up and left. At that moment, Carl suddenly remembered the man with the briefcase in front of him had appeared at the crime scene before. He then asked Yoon Ju to follow him immediately. After they followed James for a few blocks, Carl was spotted. By the time Yoon Ju followed him again, James had already crossed the street to the opposite side. James was about to disappear. The moment of truth, Squirrel disguised as a traffic cop followed him. James was stopped by a traffic cop for running a red light. He was asked to show his it and find. James pretended to search his pockets, but he did not find the it car, but pulled out a pen. The traffic police officers fell to the ground. Look at the injured Squirrel, even with the order from his superiors to chase him. Yunju didn't dare to leave for a moment. However, it was too late and Squirrel was killed. The adoptive father learned that James' mission had failed. He was ready to send someone to kill James directly, but he didn't expect that James would find him on his own initiative. A few days later, Yunju, who was traumatized by the death of his colleague, 
took the subway to work as usual. In the crowded subway, a passenger accidentally bumped into Yoon Ju. Eun Yu suddenly remembered she had seen James on the subway before. At that time, he was holding a flyer for a supermarket. Yes, James had been living inside the supermarket. Eun Yu, who had been lurking in front of the supermarket for a few days, finally spotted James. After informing the team leader Carl, Yoon Ju quietly followed James to a western restaurant. At that moment, James was planning to get a fake passport and prepare to leave Korea. As soon as James left, Yoon Ju was ready to follow him. But then James suddenly came back. Yoon Ju was exposed at the critical moment. Carl rushed over, looking at Carl sitting at the door. James recognized him. He didn't bother too much with Yoon Ju and left. After James left, Carl replaced Yoon Ju and followed him. But then Yoon Ju suddenly realized. James took a western knife from the table when he left. In the underground parking lot, Carl and James walked face to face. Since Yoon Ju came in time, James let Carl go. Since no one had seen James, so Yoon Ju had to continue to follow and provide a location for the group. And Carl also put a magazine on his stomach in advance, so he was not seriously injured. Yoon Ju followed James to the subway station, followed by the police and a bandaged Carl. In the dark tunnel, the police who were following him were chasing James, who was running away. After a long time, he made it to the exit, but then Carl appeared at the entrance of the tunnel. James had no way out. Carl pulled out his gun, but behind him, there was a train going to an unknown track. Looking behind him, the police were getting closer and closer. James fired, and Carl returned fired immediately. The sound of gunfire was interspersed with the sound of the train speeding by. Eventually, the train veered off the tracks. James' bullet also missed. With the fall of James, the robbery was over. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.